that looks nice and straight. So yeah, I can see that works pretty well. And I have to pull those ends straight. It's just so we don't... Uh, right now, if you look at the details, everything's coming in like this. It's shaping this triangle. So if we pull these ends straight, so I want to be sure that they match in the verticalness. We're already pretty close. I'll unfold here vertically. Let's go ahead and just pull that straight. Let's actually be doing this together. Invert and just the mouse. Now you can see it's not uh, coming together in that triangle shape. It looks nice and clean. Now we can unfold this and shoot straighten itself out. It can help a little bit. Same thing right here. It's gonna come in in that triangle shape. Now it should be nice and straight. See, it doesn't have a weird directionality. Yeah, that's it for the UVs. That looks nice and clean. So now we need to fix the shading. Take a look at the high. I think the most obvious is the like the little black thingies right here. Pressing the wrong buttons. So to fix that, we're gonna add a little bit of resolution. Let's see where we start with that. the best area to start might be right here I'm gonna put a triangle so we can mark that as a starting point so it goes up until there now we're gonna do this by hand here so that goes all the way until there Putting an end point. I'm just going to take off those points. Get rid of the begin and the end point axis normal. Just going to push that out a little bit. Looking at some roundness. Repeat the same down here. Again, I'm checking my points where they start.
just gonna push that out. That's gonna help with shading. Still not perfect. Now for the, the last shading errors that we have right here. Just let's take a look at the height. Match that up a little bit better. That should help a little bit with shading, so I'm gonna fix it. That should be a bit better already. Just nice match, that's right. look it's looking a little bit better we still have this big black gradient that i'm not liking maybe we can put this too hot as well it's a little bit better to fix this let's just take an edge let's just put it down here See that looks way better. And do the same here. Because I'm gonna triangulate that. I'm gonna use this one. And soften that out as well. Over here we gotta be careful because this should still be quite soft. This should be a soft edge. I think we can merge that one up. So now the shading is looking pretty nice and tight see the difference between the two just by getting rid of these little black radians it's gonna make your model look a lot more polished let's go ahead and fix the shading here Just gonna add a very tight edge to that. Holding down shift, snap to a percentage. I think we can go ahead and yeah, definitely target well that. Just make that nice and tight as well. Shading. So I think should be splitting this. Just giving this a little bit of curvature so it has a little bit more depth going on. Now I'm gonna try to capture the, the shape, the metal here. I think we can combine that one. pretty nice except for this uh, so we messed up with the target weld I hate when that happens I'm 
looks ridiculous on my target as well. Just like when you have a vertex selected, then you go to target weld. It's gonna take that vertex which was selected. I do this on accident like all the time. Super annoying. Especially when you don't notice it. Sometimes you have like a vertex selected all the way over there and it's just a disaster to fix. So do be careful when using the, the target weld. Don't think this really does anything. This one. Maybe I've that out. Yeah, that looks very nice and clean. So I'm going to depth. We can get rid of that one. Click the hard edge. I think we need to keep this one. I'm going to check. rid of that one as well. And we can put the resolution back right here. Just gonna baffle this one a little bit. So you do want to be careful for long triangles like that. See, it's messing up the shading. Let's try to fix that. So usually you can kind of fix this by making it more planar. Actually, we you can still put. Uh, extra segment here extended that extra segment because I remember that I had like a little bump here that we can now capture so the first thing let's go ahead and collapse this It's gonna look like. See, we got a little bit of an. Can you come on here? We ended up with some nice edges. This is mostly probably because we did that bevel, which messes up some things sometimes. Now we add this. Also, we add this. Now she's gonna fold fine again. Let's get an idea of the final bake. So we got a lot of handguns, but we're gonna mostly fix that later. For now, let's quickly fix those. Really don't like what that does with the shading though. I think we can maybe get a little bit better if we do like that. That looks a little bit better. Then maybe we can try to add. 
average that out. The shading looks a little bit more even. So yeah, that's not bad. Computer crash. So uh, if there's like a jump in in the video that I skipped some parts, it's because the the crash. And I wasn't able to recover the, the recording. But I think it should be fine. But just in case, uh, if it did break, we just did some um, little diamonds to up the silhouette smoothness a little bit so I think we're pretty much done it's all looking pretty nice and smooth except for this part that was still bothering me just gonna baffle that actually let's do it by hand Take a look. Let's push these out just to get a nice roundness. I think that should be looking very nice. Maybe we can connect this to fix the shading. This one can go for sure, this one as well. That's just how we can get one down there. Let's try putting one here as well. I don't think we need that. Let's have a look. 
so that one not like mm, necessarily how pointy that looks that up smooth that out a little bit I think now we should get a really nice looking bake Of course you cannot get rid of all the festing, like these little points, you're never gonna get rid of them. So that's just because we need to keep it low poly. You can see if it look like this, we get this point, which is pretty annoying. But from the side, it looks nice and rounded, because there's little diamonds. You're mostly gonna see it from the from an angle like this, instead of like a, a downwards angle. That's okay. Don't like the white. Look, that's like a gray. Then we can even do some. Uh, I call it ray tracing if we want. You can see here like the effect of those little depth pockets. See the, the shadows are falling in it and the occlusion. Well there's no shadow now because the lighting. Let's say we do ray tracing. See how the shadows fill up that empty space. So that's giving it a nice look of depth. looking very clean so that's looking great so I think the the only thing that we still need to fix is the like the little rope thing is around here then it has some shape and silhouette then we can start putting everything together and doing the final UVs so we can get an even better bake going. So yeah, if we zoom in, you can really tell how bad this piece is looking. There's some weird stuff with the UVs as well here, I think. So let's have a closer look. And checking out the high against the Maybe we need to just a little bit. I settings reset. No, I hate when this happens. Try to figure out how I had everything. I think this one should be like, eh. Something like that. Okay. So I don't like how that area looks in the bake. Yeah, that's looking nice, a lot better. Just gonna go ahead and do like a little thingy like that. Push this out. Just to get a little bit more smooth. It's okay if it doesn't match the high. Just wanna try to smooth this out. That's really nice. I'm messing up the volume here. I think it's okay. So 
So first, let's take a quick look at the UVs. Mm. UVs are fine, just a triangulation mask. That should be mask 2, nope, mask 3. And we'll start with putting just a few seconds down. Then we can try to make them actually bigger shapes. This can be a little bit tedious, but I definitely think it's worth the effort. Because it was looking pretty bad. So you get an average vertex, pretty useful. don't care too much about the back side, mostly worried about matching the front. to get a little bit of shape. I think this should work. Let's polish this in. I think we should catch it. That one. See, right, that's pretty important to follow triangulation. Really follow it. Shape. I'm gonna check out the shading. That's looking pretty good. Just push this down a little bit. I think that works. Let's go ahead and do a test. Uh, this one needs to be pushed out. Okay. It's looking better. Now you can see we have some nice interesting break breakups and silhouette. Few hundred extra triangles. I think that's okay. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. So now we're pretty much done with all the parts. We can unhide everything. Now we need to worry about doing the UVs. And if we want, we can clean some stuff up like this. Give those little points, fasting, same way that we did with the mask. I'm gonna start with the, the mask. 
actually let's start with the goggles I'm just gonna hide everything else So the mask is gonna be pretty damn easy Actually, let's start with uh, the helmet. It's gonna be the biggest, so we can kinda get an idea of the texel density that we can work with. I think we should smooth that out. Actually, we have lots of little issues in the UVs here. gonna do first is check the mesh for any mistakes so clean up and we're gonna check for angles so that's not too bad we just got a few of them also see that we have a little hard edge there that shouldn't be there See if we have any more. So nope. Let's go to the next one. Nope. Nope. So you just wanna kind of go over all your meshes like this. Check if you have any problems. So if we don't have one there, we can probably skip the rest. I think you can also just do the whole group at once. And so the last part we have some issues. Comment four. Don't think we have any in the buckle. That's that one, number three. Nah, it's the one we skipped. That's also the one that has the most. to do it in the way that the shading keeps the nicest. Push that down a little bit, make some space for the triangulation. So I'm not sure why it sometimes mess up and just selects all. If selecting all, I think it's pretty safe to ignore. So now we shouldn't have any here. So that's okay. Let's check the goggles. Start with this one. So you can see we have some vertexes, vertices that don't do anything. Pretty important step you don't want to skip. Make sure that your models are nice and clean. No little errors. You're always gonna end up with some errors at the end. So it's important to, to check it. 
and it's pretty fast. I think we have quite a lot in here. Check this one first. That's not too bad. Got a few. Also do select, don't do cleanup, because this won't actually fix the issue. This will just make the make it horrible most of the time. So it's better to spend like a few extra minutes to make sure everything's nice and clean. Sometimes it can be pretty difficult to find and you just gotta kinda move stuff. I'm not sure why it's still saying here. Yeah, not sure. Come on. I think here's the last one. You can see most of times just because of mistakes. Because when you did the cutting, you didn't cut all the way on the vertex. So let's say I do cleanup instead of select. You can see how that fixes itself. So you can see that becomes a problem because that's not what we want, right? To fix that, we should be taking the vertex and just move it like that. So if it's not selecting anything, you fix all the errors. Let's try to reset. And now it's not selecting anything. Of course, we have some cleanup, so we want to select. Now it's not selecting anything. Take a look, I think for this one we're just gonna merge this together. Collapse it. Right there. It's not selecting anything. You're gonna be making these little mistakes the, the rest of your life, by the way. At least I will. It's just you're working on it and you don't think too much about it. So I think that's all. You can even take the whole low group. Just gonna apply, quickly check. I'm not sure why sometimes it kind of messes up the thingy. Yeah, we still have some, I guess. They didn't get selected early, which is strange. But you can see that we have quite a lot. Let's try to reduce this a little bit. side as well again even though we're working with a high low we still need to follow the, uh, the rules if the vertex doesn't add anything don't have it don't like how shading is falling there though that's better I think that's all. Nope. Let's 
see most of the times like little errors like the cut tool messing up or the baffle tool this shouldn't be difficult to fix some weird vertices here and there. Got rid of some. It's never a good sign that always makes me very nervous. Or maybe Maya messed up. I think it didn't do anything too bad. Man, sometimes my just takes your mesh and just completely ruins it. See, I really don't remember putting points there. definitely think my did something wrong we can do this select all and then just backspace and it's gonna delete all the points that have no edges to them shit so i'm gonna save i'm gonna delete all the history so yeah it's definitely something going on I'm gonna export all this backup. I'm gonna save. Let's call this backup. I'm gonna save again. At this point, you really gotta respect Maya. If you see something like this pop up and you undo and fixes itself. Be very, very grateful and make a bunch of saves and exports so you can always go back. Because that's some scary stuff. <laughs> so let's find a low nine. And delete all the history, all the transforms, and whatever I can do. I'm gonna try this again. Shit, I definitely messed up. He did a lot of things that we didn't want it to do. So I'm gonna go back a little bit in my files and see if I can find a better file. So I was able to recover our work, luckily. And that's just because I had the, the export that I used to mama set. So that's very, very lucky. All the other pieces seemed fine. It's just that this piece got messed up somehow. So I'm gonna get the end guns out of here. He's already. Really one thing that I hate about Maya that sometimes it just destroys your your mesh. It's the worst part about Maya. So everything looks fine. So one thing that's a problem, we lost our smoothing groups. So we gotta redo all that work. One thing that we can try, we can uh, copy this 
Got no powder up as well. So now let's uh, hide everything except for these two. See which one's the good one. I think it's this one. So let's call this one new. And the broken one, let's call this one old. Now what we can do is we can try to get the, the old one and then select the new one. Mesh. First let's actually go mesh display and look normal so soften. Then take the old one, new one. Mesh. Transfer. New vertex normal. And for the rest have everything turned off. We can try world first. Now you can see we got our hot and soft edges back. Not perfectly because it got broken. So now we can delete the history. Let's get rid of the old one. And let's just... Do mesh display unlock normals. Now instead of having to put everything in back by hand, just kind of check if everything's looking okay. Which it seems to be the case. Again, I'm gonna make extra new save and wanna be very careful. And I'll definitely switch to blend in the future. Not there yet, but I would love to avoid things like this. I'm gonna take the low group. I'm gonna go mesh display, mesh cleanup, select. You can see now it doesn't select anything at all, which means that we fixed all the angles. Let's next save. Now we're ready to do the final UVs. So like I said, we're gonna start off with the mask. Uh, with the helmet. For this, let's just uh, take our UV editor. Not sure what's happening here. There's some Selected. <laughs> I think we gotta select all and then deselect. Okay. Just my being my. So I think we should probably just cut this. Definitely interacting too much, intersecting. Also not sure why this is not cut. Hmm. Actually looking at it now it makes sense that I didn't cut it. So here we didn't need to. Just first take this piece. It's gonna be like the problematic piece. First thing we gotta do is take all this. I'm having a difficult time seeing which one I have to do. I think it should be those. Okay, so let's pull those straight. You can 
change the size of the pivot with the plus and minus icon. Then over here, let's unfold that. Yeah, that's fixing itself. I think we can take all actually. Let's take all, unfold. It's looking a lot better. Not perfect. Definitely not perfect. Take a look what's happening here. This one. Okay, so we gotta pull this all straight as well. This can be a little bit tedious, but that's how we can get some really nice UVs. We unfold that. Make sure we have that selected. I can see that looks way better. Take a look at the directionality. See if we still have that thingy that we used earlier on the mask. I don't think we still have it. We still have a checker here. Nope. Do a new one. Let's call this checker. Okay, to mess up the name. I'm gonna take my little check. Put this on raw. Let's change the tiling. Let's put this to like 30. And 30. Try 40 actually. Scale this up a little bit. Now we can start to see the, the directionality and the stretching. I think I want to try. Uh, First, let's take the one in the middle right here. The UVs. Put that straight. That's already straightening everything out a little bit. Let's take this one. So we're working with ladder. I want to try to get the straightest, cleanest UVs I can, so they follow the ladder pattern nicely. And do something like that. See how that just gets pulled way straighter. And do the same here, pulling straight. It's better to have a little bit of stretching, in my opinion, than to have the pattern look like it's not going well. Let's move that 
out horizontally. That's one thing I do love about Maya. The UV edit is super super nice in my opinion. I didn't try the one in Blender for too much time, but I hated it. Actually, we do need those. And lastly, let's take those. Pull those straight and take the surrounding UVs. Smooth that out. Now you can see that we're getting some very nice straight UVs. It's gonna be amazing to lay a pattern on like leather. If you don't know how to get these buttons, it's just modify. Uh, where's where is it? I think edit now modify. Unfold. Then you just control shift, click it to add it to the shelf. Make sure it's set to vertical and the other one to horizontal. If you don't have the shelf, you can go here. You can do a custom shelf to get those. So let's see. That's all looking nice and straight. I'm going to take the one in the middle. And hold down tap to select multiple ones. Now I'm gonna pull that one straight. Hold down shift to invert the selection by the way. And something about there is okay. Don't want to select anything there. And lay that out vertically. Now we're getting some very nice straight UVs. Now the pattern is gonna follow nicely along the edge. So it's actually gonna be looking like proper laid out leather. So for example, if we do this, you can see how that gets cut off, which isn't very nice. It's a little bit nice if it just follows nicely. And also these UVs, they look super nice and clean, which is pretty cool. Do want to try to relax this a little bit? Actually, do I? Yep. Definitely don't want to do that. So to fix that, I think we can take all that, something like that. Do you want to have those straight? Let's try to fix that a little bit. So we can do something like that and then just move that out. Same here, let's make sure that's not intersecting. Those are pretty nice clean UVs. Go to this piece. Not sure what happened there, but that looked very odd. Take that one, pull it straight. Optimize. Then we gotta do the same with one here. Wish we could add like a little text to them. So I knew which one was vertical and which one was horizontal. So I think we can pull this straight and unfold it here. Whoa. It's 
doing some weird stuff. Usually I don't spend too much time on my UVs because I kind of finish them while I'm doing the retop. But always at the end you gotta go back do like a little bit of cleanup on the UVs. Everything looking nice. Little pieces like this I don't care too much how they look. Just for big pieces I wanna spend a little bit more attention to them. follow a good directionality that's why I have these arrows so I can check um, which way they go this I don't like this at all I hate like those long wobbly UVs some people have so just take it all and make it nice and straight I have no idea what this. Ah, okay. It's starting to look a little bit more normal. Again, don't worry too much about stretching. Be sure that it's more or less okay. I think when you first learn to do UVs, the only thing you really care about is avoiding stretching. So you should be worried about directionality and how the pattern falls on your UVs. And of course, the extreme stretching you don't want to have like all the stuff right here, it's okay. You can try to minimize a little bit by selecting all and just doing that. I prefer to have it straight, I think. Go ahead and do that one. Maybe this one as well. And that one. good to me. Again, this needs to be straight, it's gonna be a leather pattern. Let's just take a middle edge, pull that straight and optimize. pretty extreme then you do stuff like this straighten as much as you can and you optimize but I really don't feel like doing that and I want to try to work as effective as I can I 
think that's about all. Just pull to straight, invert it and optimize. I'll quickly check out what this is. Seems like a little depth piece. No idea what we're looking at. Okay. That's okay like that. Yeah, I think that's all. So then we go to transform. Get. Let's put this to 4. Nine six and get so we know what our text density will be more or less. So now we can try to lay out. See what that does. See, it's not a very good job. So then we can scale like this. I'm just focusing on the the biggest piece. That's gonna be that one. And this one is quite a big piece. So I want to try to maybe cut this one up in multiple pieces. So we can use the UV space a little bit more efficient. So it's the back side, so I don't want to just for that piece have to decrease the texture density of all these pieces here. Worst case scenario, I'm just gonna make this way smaller than the other pieces. But we are gonna see it a little bit like here and stuff. So I wanna be careful. Just gonna kinda go like this. Mm. So I'm thinking if we can put it somewhere. So I think what I'm gonna do. I think we put this edge here for this purpose. Maybe we didn't, but I'm very thankful to my past self. So we can take all this. This is like the stuff that you're actually gonna see mostly. Should actually get a face in here if we can. I think I'm gonna do some renders with a face in it and without a face. So I do want to be careful about that. So then we cut. Uh, let's unfold to see where we missed the edge. Let's get the size. Let's set. And now we need to cut this in two. I think that's a pretty good cut right there. Let's first try it like this. I don't think this will work. I think it's still too big. Let's get a set. That's still too big. So you can see the ID. We can start to slowly fit the stuff in here. So let's just cut it right in the middle one more time. Set, set. Be sure that we're working with the right texel density. So that one fits pretty nicely. I do think this is the bigger one. Let's try optimizing. Hmm. Maybe we can change the shape a little bit. See if that brings too much stretching. I think like that's okay. Let's get set. So 
we're gonna do the same for this piece let's check out how that falls on the pattern see this looks much nicer and also fits easier let's also check uh, that we don't have any flip uvs if you have then they'll be red you want to avoid that i think this one fits like this maybe nope this will be fine so you can see here it won't fit really well we're gonna pull that straight optimize optimize and something like that make sure these are straight as well So you can kind of start to see why straight UVs can also be pretty important for packing. Make sure we have the same texture density again. So that's a pain. Let's go ahead and straighten this piece out. Again, I don't care too much about this. So we're just trying to make it fit. Let's optimize. Let's have Try to kind of average the distances there that's out of the UV space. Still scale this up a little bit. You really want to try to get the size as big as you can. So now if you have like a little error like this, don't stress about it. Just do something like that. Keep a little bit of distance in between the, the UV and the border. And just say optimize. That fixes it. Use soft select, so it's even a little bit easier. You can see how it's starting to fit pretty well. See if we can optimize that. Whoop. Nope. Not at all. It's okay, that's not too much stretching. So now we still have this big piece here. First, let's take all. Let's get. If you set this now, you'll see that. Actually not changing at all, which is great. We can change it a little bit as we messed around with it. So now get. Now we just set. So this is probably the first thing that you notice. This thing is too long. So you can take everything. So I kind of want to start with the most important things in terms of we cannot really adjust the shape of them because they're big and I don't want to cut them in two. I think that will fit a little bit better if we invert that. I'm just going to be trying to fill out the space as efficient as possible. I 
has shit. I forgot that we have other groups as well. Let's take all those. There's going to be a little bit of back and forward between trying to get it as uh, sufficient as possible, making sure everything fits. Most of the times you have to go back and kind of scale this all down. But if you get lucky, you can get everything fitted in. I think we won't be running into a big issue here. Because so far everything's fitting in great. So here you kind of need to decide, do I want to scale everything down a little bit or push this all up a little bit or do I want to make a cut? Most of the times a little bit of scale is okay, not really liking it though. I think I prefer to scale this thingy down a little bit. It's like a sticky border, I'm not gonna notice if it's scaled down a little bit. This way we can avoid putting a seam there. Let me move this all up a little bit. I have no idea what that is. So those just fit them in here. One thing that's kind of important but not too much you want to be very clean about it, you check the position. So logically speaking, this one should be there. This one should be here. Because now everything from this side is on the same side. But now where it's substance paint, it doesn't matter too much. But like uh, earlier, when we had to do everything in Photoshop, it was pretty important. I think I'm just going to scale this one down as well. I'm going to take all that. Just unfold that. Then just push it, put it here. I'm going to push this down a little bit. A bit here as well. Just like the interior, I don't care too much about having this one perfect. Especially here, the more inside it becomes. I'm gonna take this, just gonna say, scale down a little bit. Let's do the same here. This is without soft select, so we don't mess up that sharp edge. Push that down, invert. Stop nice. Do the same here. See how you kind of need to play with the UVs to get a really good fit. So it's better to just get some stretching in the UVs and pack them well, both than putting extra seams and whatever. If you can make it fit, make it fit. If you can't, then you need to put some extra edges in there, some seams, I mean. So if you got all these little garbage pieces, the easiest way to do is go layout, uh, translate, preserve and turn that off. Didn't work. Uh, preserve 3D ratios. Nope. Preserve UV ratios. 
Maybe I've put too late. Just see. Skill mode none. Ugh. Don't remember. Let me try to figure this one out. Fold. Scale mode off. All right, that's it. So that will just kind of lay them all out in a in a square, which can be pretty handy to kind of get an idea of how much you have left to work with. Another thing, uh, we can take all these and make safe as well. Let's do a new save. And if you go to arrange and layout, just orient and that will put everything like straight or not. That's annoying. Let's just do it for the ones that look like they can use it. So orient. You can just hit G to repeat that. So now we can just focus on small sections of the UVs. Make it a little bit easier. Those are all the metal pieces, pretty much. Take a look. Ah, okay, no. So let's continue. These are definitely the more important pieces. Those are actually part of the helmet, like the leather pieces and whatever. So make sure the size stays the same. So it did. Now when I lay them out, I can also do a little bit more cleanup. So now I'm more focused on them. Let's look for a good place. You want to try to lay everything out in the same directionality if you can. Let's take a look. All the arrows ideally should be pointing upwards. So this one, if you want the UVs to be like as good as they can, you take this one to make sure they point up. This can help with uh, stuff in shaders and whatever. But like for personal projects, you don't need to worry about it. You're probably not gonna do something fancy. But for example, if you have like a shader, that uses the UV directionality to apply like a rain effect or something. Then it's important that they all point upwards or downwards, however your shade is built. But that is that they are coherent. Again, straight UVs can help with a lot of stuff. For example, mid mapping, and just having the bake fall a little bit nicer if you get lucky and falls on the straight part. So, again, if you want to be really clean, make sure they're all rotated the right way. But I'm not gonna worry about it too much. So if you want to use straighten but it's not giving you a good result, you can change the value. So I don't think, yeah, we definitely don't need to reskill anything. Everything looks like it's gonna fit in well. 
that's pretty nice. So at first you always want to fit in the main pieces. Actually gonna have some leftover space. Just gonna take all this. Like right there. not sure if this was the right decision to make that a UV cut. Seems like a pop decision. Oh that's <laughs> that's very unfortunate. I almost want to keep it as a UV cut just because everything was laying out very nicely. But we can do something like that. And just optimize that. That's okay. Now keep that as a cut. Not sure why that's a UV cut there though. Strange decision on my part. So most of the time you're just pulling stuff straight and then optimizing stuff around it. This should give you pretty good results. Don't forget to get rid of that ugly hard edge. The UV stage is also like the final stage where you can make some small adjustments. Get rid of some mistakes that you might have slipped through. Like those little hot edges there. But once you've done your final bake, you're probably not gonna go back and adjust stuff and rebake and update your bakes and paint it. It's just annoying. So you do wanna kinda check everything at this point. Everything's exactly how you like it. <laughs> All right, this uh, this big piece, I forgot about it. Uh, let's see. Can we put this in a more logical place? I think we can put this here. Just trying to make some space for the big piece. Let's see if that's the right direction it is. Just that a little bit, give it a little bit of edge padding. I'm just gonna try to keep this uh, as empty as I can. We got like two things left and one is gonna be the big interior piece then the other one is gonna be all these little detail pieces so the idea what we usually follow we lay out like our main pieces and then with all the leftover space we fill them up with stuff like this and stuff like this you can also scale up 
to try to use all the space that you have. Just gonna see if I can put this one in a better place. I don't think I can. And try to fill this area up first. So we can see that we have a little mistake here. Not sure what's happening. I think we have an accidental cut. So I just prefer to keep as many pieces from the same uh, group together. I'm just trying to clear a little bit of space so we can fill all these out over here. So we don't have uh, a lot of random pieces there. Of course the most important part is uh, keeping everything tight. Opposed to keeping everything together. I'm gonna do something like this. And now we just use the leftover space to chop this up into pieces and to fill this out. So I think the easiest way to do this is to kind of fit this in here. Actually, we, we don't need to put EUV seams. Just soft select this in. Again, don't do this for like a main piece. For like uh, an interior. Usually I'd make this like super tiny. Something like this and just put it in the, in the corner. Not waste any space. But because we are gonna show it in some renders in interior I think. We do want to be a little bit more careful. I'm gonna give it a little bit of space. Just be sure. that stuff you see that doesn't look too bad check out the density text density see it's a bit bigger but it's okay it's gonna be seen a little bit especially if we unhide all this stuff see we can barely look at it even if I'm gonna show it but this we're gonna see it more so that's why I decided to give that one like the same texture density. And then this one's kind of occluded by other stuff. But again, if you have like a face for a project, it's going to be a face here and you never can see the interior. And don't give it any space at all. And also reduce the poly count a little bit. Account, so I'm not gonna go worry about a few more polys or not. Here we can get rid of a few. This one shouldn't be a hard edge. Here we're not gonna see it at all. The renders probably. Just save a little bit here and there. And having round stuff like this, this is like really killer for your poly count and the tube like stuff. So if you can reduce it, that's pretty nice. I'm gonna go here and just take some of these. Same idea like the 
the tube for uh, the mask. I'm not gonna see it here, so I can optimize the poly count a bit. Just try to keep it a little bit more on the lower side. It's already pretty high. So now we have 4,800. This should knock a few hundred off. messed up big time. So we should be careful that we start the same segment as well, of course. So now we shouldn't select anything else. Okay. So 4,800. got 4,400 uh, weird stuff happening here I'm just gonna go ahead and add a dash flow here make it a little bit more nice again if I was doing like a game project Definitely all this stuff will be looking more like this and we'll get rid of like 2,000 polys. That's not important. So now what we can do is start filling on those pieces in here. So I'm going to start with the bigger pieces. then work our way from big to small pieces. Just re layout. Gonna get an ID. I think those can be fitted in pretty nicely over here. to snap the rotation Go and fit some stuff in between here really try to fill up all that empty space So if you're kind of looking for space, zoom out and check like where the big areas are. We get like one big area, two, three, four, and then three smaller ones. So then you kind of know where to focus your stuff. So you want to try to eliminate as many big areas as you can. Just so the UVs also look a little bit more optimized. Even if it's not necessarily the case, that just makes your UVs look pretty nice. So I think these are an important UV. 
movies, correct? We don't see them. So I can give them a little bit less edge padding, put them close together. I can scale them down if I like. Again, we don't have a problem with UV space. So I'm not too worried about optimizing it as much as I can. Now let's take all these. These are clearly the front. Let's start laying these out. I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger because we have the space to do that. I'm just gonna start putting them in place where they have a little bit of space left. this so you can see I'm zooming out and then see here we have quite a lot of space left put one there then over here maybe Now whatever we have left is pretty unimportant. I think these are the important ones, maybe. Yep, these are the ones we can see. Let's scale those up a bit. Fill some of that space. Just gonna put that one there. Keep them together if I can. That a little bit. Okay, so the job now, I think this can be seen. take those see we have some open space with space I think we can scale those up a little bit and scale that down just a little bit get some edge padding I prefer to have it closer to the, the other piece of metal then close to the ladder because if there's a little bit of bleeding it's okay it's metal bleeding into metal and bleeding just refers to when the when it's being mip mapped resolution is gonna get lowered so eventually uh, it starts blending together about the edge padding and the job of these little almost invisible ones actually pretty much invisible you're never gonna see them just try to fill up empty space as nicely as you can to make the UVs look more optimized This just for, let's say, send it to a client, uh, they're not gonna see the, the UVs. I'm gonna do a quick look, but they're not gonna see, hey, what's this piece, what's this piece, can I see it? And by really trying to fit everything in, it's just gonna look very professional. So don't just place them wherever you have some free space place in the way you have the most free space. So I'm looking here, looking to areas like this, 
this, this. Because that all looks like wasted space. But as soon as we put like a useless thingy like this in here, it's gonna look used space. And we do this all the way at the end because we cannot use any other we cannot use the space in any other way anymore. So we already put everything as efficient as we possibly can. So here we have still quite a big empty space. Two more pieces. I think I'm gonna fill this one up here. I think I'll fill that up here. So now if we take a quick look at the UVs. Make a little bit more edge padding. I'm gonna average those out so it looks more filled up. Space that out a little bit better. Trying to get a little bit more edge padding on certain pieces. Edge padding refers to the the distance between islands. Island is uh, like a little piece of UV. It's a UV island. So if we take a quick look, this all looks pretty nice and efficient. Sometimes when you zoom out, some pieces look really close to a different piece and that's kind of like your clue that you need a little bit more edge padding. I think those UVs look beautiful. Piece of art. So let's save. So we definitely got the worst out of the way. Second worst will be the mask, and the chillest will be the, the goggles. So let's take a look at how our base can look like. Helmet. Let's open up our helmet bake. So I forgot to export. Let's go here and export the helmet. So now let's do our final bake. It's not gonna be final final, maybe we need to do some offset painting and whatever. I'm gonna bump up the samples to 64. Put this to 16. And do a bake. Now we're gonna get an idea of what the, what the bake will look like. So JPEG doesn't support 16 bit. But that's okay, we'll change it for a final PSD bake. Let's take a look. I think that looks very nice. Got a really high quality bake. One thing that we are gonna try, maybe, is do a 8K bake. Like if your system can handle it, definitely do a 8K bake. But work in paint on 4K, but just getting that 8K bake is gonna make it a little bit more nice and crisp your bake. I think that looks nice. Don't see any issues. Except for the obvious offset that we need to fix. Uh, what happened? I think we applied the wrong material. So yeah, let's move on to the goggles. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the UV editor and do get. And I'm gonna 
gonna do is set. I just double this value, so this will be 70, doesn't need to be perfect. It'd be great if we can fit everything in double the texel density. So that way we can decide if we want to keep the texel density even, but just have more resolution on the goggles. So that way we texture 4K, but if we want to keep the texel density even, we can still decide to start texturing in 2K. So let's take both uh, the goggles, set all the size, and try a layout. So we're definitely going to be able to make this work. Take like these pieces, move them out. It's the same idea. I'm going to try to make them as big as I can. Text density is off with a little bit, okay. It's not important. See how nice and easy these UVs are compared to the to the helmet itself. So I'm pretty sure we cannot see this at all. Yeah. Maybe a little bit on the edge there. But we do have quite a lot of UV space. I'm gonna try to keep these as big as I can. This looks very, very strange. Yeah, that's definitely not a proper UV. I think when we adjusted the... Uh... Actually, let's do it like this. When we adjusted like the, the loops of them, they go messed up. So let's go modify, unitize. Let's see. Let's do this one the back. Okay, let's go with the back one. And then this one. Invert and move and seal. Those are proper UVs. What I'm gonna try to do is give the, the glass itself a little bit more resolution. And then over here, I'm gonna cut. Mm. Let's do one more cut here. Because I'm sh not entirely sure if we. We won't be able to see anything from the top edge there. I'll show you in 3D. Like I'm a little bit worried that we might be able to see a little bit of a weird pixelation there if we make it super low. Text density on these. So I'm gonna give this uh, space because we have the, the space to do it. I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna make a cut. Let's put it like that. Some nice little eyebrows. Let's give it some edge padding. Probably move this down a little bit. Then these pieces. We're never going to see this at all. This can be very tiny. 
Then we got all this support geometry. We can just scale this up. So we can make it fit nicely in the UV space. Scale that up a little bit more. You were doing this for like a, a game, you definitely wouldn't be putting 4K to this. Probably be like 512 or even 256. But in personal projects, we got to enjoy ourselves. Like my idea of what uh, a good personal project should be, you should learn from the process and the final render should look good. And if I make this, let's say in 512, I'm not gonna enjoy the, the process. Final render is not gonna look good. And I'll just learn the, I'll learn just as much, giving it more resolution and more topology, so it's okay. straight but why not the lower the texture density is texture density that you get to work with so the lower the texture size the more important it is to have straight UVs This piece on the back, you're not going to see them. You are low on texture space. Definitely don't fill this stuff up. Take a quick look. How can I make the UVs look as used as possible? Probably move this out of the way. And put this one in here. And put this one here. And get stuck with this piece. <laughs> I think we can rotate that. very fast but they look good they work let's do an export so google go ahead save this 